Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to License to View, a weekly podcast on the internet where two best friends get together to talk about pop culture news. Zach, yes. what's going on, man? Oh my god, dude. Uh, nothing. There's literally nothing going on. <laughs> there's no news this week. No, really. there's really not. I mean, the biggest thing was, I mean, we'll get to there, but I mean, like, the only thing that I really cared about was, had some news, but like, that's barely it. Besides yeah. that, like, nothing really happened. There, there's no, I've been checking every single day for yeah. anything worth anything and nothing's there. Well, it's like you look at sites like Collider and Booth Movies Death, and they have no movie news. They just are putting out like it, they all just are like, I think they made like a couple of opinion pieces like in the first couple of weeks, and now it's like every time I see, they're just recycling those same pieces. Over yeah, and over it's again. a ton of like uh, exposés. Yeah, it's a ton. It's a ton of their fucking BuzzFeed shit, where it's like, I mean, I get it. You have nothing else to do, but it's a ton of like just articles that are just like fucking lists. Like it's the best things to watch on Netflix, the best things to watch yeah. on Amazon Prime. There was Which, one where I guess James Dunn did a tweet where he like yeah. listed action movies, and so I, I saw Slash Film just like listed did his list and then mm -hmm. said like where you could watch them, and I was like, I mean that's cool, I guess. I saw the same the same exact thing from Collider was like, how many have you seen of James yeah. Gunn's? I don't fucking care. Like I'm all about yeah. James Gunn. Po I think that's really cool. Like mm -hmm. Edgar Wright does it all the time. I love yeah. when directors and writers and actors. Po Talk about their favorite movies. I'm all about that. I love that. Yeah. You no, know, because Criterion has a, a YouTube show like called like In the Closet or whatever, and they okay. have like film people come to their like studio in New York or whatever, and mm -hmm. they have them come into their Criterion closet and just pick out movies. Fuck yeah. That they they keep themselves whatever. So they have a bunch of like indie actors and you no know, directors and like old school guys and girls. And right. they, they pick films and they go, hey, this movie's really rad for this particular reason. And it's advertisement for Criterion, but also right. it gets that person free movies. Like Edgar, yeah. Edgar Wright did one. And I was like, oh, well, if Edgar Wright likes this movie, then probably I should check it out because I love Edgar yeah. Wright, right? Right. You know, so I And I don't love James Gunn, but I looked at the list. I was like, that's a good list. Like, I mean, it's a pretty solid list. I mean, that's – I. On his list, I've gone through, and I've I've probably watched like half his list. I mean, he's got good he's got good shit on there. I think I've seen, judging from I can't remember the, a lot of the the big action ones you would know. Like I, I'll, yeah. I'll, let me just pull it up right now, actually. I mean, the ones that are sticking out in my mind was, of course, he had John Wick on there. He had the Raid on there. He didn't have the Raid two, which I thought was disappointing. Uh, I, I can understand. He had the Raid. He had the Raid. He had Die Hard. He had uh, Old Boy. He had Lady Vengeance. He had like Crank. Yeah, it was like fifty four something like that. But yeah, like, he had like it's a, it's an insane list that he put out. To there. me, the the and I I don't I love when again I love when directors and actors and film people do that. I don't love when news aggregate sites say, "Hey, how many have you watched?" Because yeah. like who fucking cares? Like yeah, nobody cares. Chances are you've seen Die Hard. Like if you yeah. li if you're going to Collider.com or Screen Rant or yeah. Birth Movies Death or Deadline or whoever, or you, yeah. if you even follow James Gunn on Twitter, yeah, you've probably seen Die Hard. Like I mean, yeah. it's it's Die Hard. You've probably seen it. You know, yeah. if it was like some obscure ass movie, like yeah, some you know new wave Japanese fucking gangster yakuza movie i'd be like okay yeah. that's different i get that but he's like, got some stuff like that on there there's a couple of titles well, on there like, that like i'd seen North but, yeah, Northwest. I mean, it's, yeah. Like, that's an old movie some old people movie. like me like my film knowledge starts i also in 1972. wouldn't really consider i mean i've seen north by northwest i would not consider north by northwest an action movie yeah that's how i feel about um it's more of like a spy thriller it's not really an yeah. action movie he has on his on his list also elite elite uh squadron elite elite squad yeah i saw that yeah yeah. great movie i haven't, I haven't watched that it's a there's two it's a brazilian uh police movie there's two of okay. them it's the the lead actor is the guy who plays pablo escobar in narcos okay. they're both fantastic movies um but to me they're that, not, they're not like action J movies yeah he had they're that like and he had one that was called like JSA something it was like joint squad action or something like that that I was like oh that's that sounds interesting but yes yeah, yeah. I, I remember seeing that I, I have no idea what that is I'd never heard of it before I was like oh I'd be interested in looking it sounds like something. a Chinese movie it does it sounds Chinese as fuck because it, it reminds I me thought of it was Donnie DC Yen. for a second because it was GSA I was like oh is just society of America they made a well, fucking movie it honestly sounds like a Donnie Yen movie he's like SPL 
and he has oh, like yeah. a kill zone. I'm like, oh, that's a Donnie Yen movie, probably JSA. Well, um, wasn't one of Donnie's Flashpoint? Was that his? Or what yeah, was that? Flashpoint. Yeah, Flashpoint, Flashpoint? Uh, and SPL, um, and then Kill Zone. Uh, I think maybe Flashpoint's once. I don't know. One of the, I think SPL might be the Chinese name, and then maybe maybe it's translated to Flashpoint. I don't know. But oh, there's like you called it. You called it, dude. It's fucking Chinese as fuck. Is it really? Who's in it? Joint Joint Security Area. Um. Oh, hold on. No, this it's, is no, it's Korean. This is a fucking cop movie. Oh. Or spy yeah, it's movie. A cop movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember looking at a list of the best Korean movies, and this is on it. Yeah, Park Chan Wook. Who? What did, wait, I know that name. What the yeah, fuck? he he did. Uh, he did, did he do? Okay, he did Old Boy and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like um before Old Boy, I believe. I think, I think so. Well, this is two thousand, so maybe so, yeah, before Old Boy. Yeah, but I remember looking at a list of when I was looking at watching Asian movies a couple months back. I remember I kept seeing this name, and it was I, it was this, but I just didn't I didn't. I've yeah. never seen it. I've never seen it before. So like, but that's also like, why if you're gonna put that on there, James Gunn, maybe yeah. you should put Infernal Infernal, you know, affairs. Yeah, Infernal on there. affairs. What dude. are we talking about? Hundred um, percent. But uh, yeah, there's nothing going on really. There's like five things worth even talking about. Yeah. And the fact that we spent four minutes on James Gunn's be- my favorite <laughs> action list tells you that like, there's nothing yeah. really really going on. Uh, no. But for the last week, Zach, what have you been up to? Um, I haven't really been doing that much. I'm going to run through what I watched, but I mean, the majority of time was spent playing Final Fantasy, which I'll okay. get into. But um, first thing that I watched was that I watched, uh, I saw this come on Netflix, and as soon as I saw it come up, I was like, I got to watch it. I have to. So I went and watched Minority Report. Mm. It's a great fucking movie. Uh, absolutely love it. Um, I feel like underrated tom cruise flick i feel like that's a this is one that like gets looked over a lot um well, from I, his body of work also i fucking i, I don't know why i forgot but it's fucking steven spielberg yeah spielberg movie yeah i i feel like minority report it's a great movie i think minority report and collateral are the two tom cruise movies people yeah. really forget about yeah because to me i mean like his character minority report i don't know his name um Rick, uh, Rick Deckard. I don't know his fucking name in Minority Report. His name Airport. is like it's some generic shit. It's like Con, it's like John Con. I want to say it's John Connor. It's not John Connor or whatever, Edward something. Whatever, I don't know. Whatever his name is, it's generic it, white guy name. That's still in the same lane as what Tom Cruise does. Like, yeah, I'm the good guy who's ultimately doing the good thing. Whereas, like in Collateral, it's like this is the farthest Tom Cruise has ever played. Like yeah. Tom, I'm playing an assassin. I'm playing. I a, wish you would do some shit like that again. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm playing an assassin, like because his character in Minority Report is like, okay, this is Ethan Hunt in the yeah. future, basically, yeah. and a cop, not a spy. Like it's the same kind of character to me. That's mm-hmm. that's a good movie though. But to me, honestly, and this is this, this is there's no reason for this except for in my own brain. What mm. year did Minority Report come out? Oh five, oh um, four. I think it was oh three. 2002. 2002. For some reason in my brain, and I, I they're distinct enough to I, I know they're different movies because you're, you're going to laugh at me as to why I'm even saying this. Okay. They're two very distinct different movies in terms of who leads the movies. But okay. for some reason in my brain, I feel like Minority Report and iRobot came out back to back. Um, and they didn't. I don't, they did not they come didn't? out back to back. I don't think so. I fucking love iRobot. 2004. So I mean, it's me, not too far apart. To me, they they seem like the same movie, and they're not. They have at very all. similar aesthetic. I think the biggest thing that gets to me, especially with the rear watching Minority Report, because I've seen iRobot so many times that like I don't even have to think about it. But um, the the biggest thing for me that like gets me to confuse them is that they both take place in the future, and the way that the cars look in the future, yeah. like it's specifically when. Tom Cruise is in the scene where he's like he's first trying to run away and you see the shit where it's like all the cars on the highway or whatever. Yeah. The way cars look in both movies is very similar. They're yeah. they're like boxy. They're they're not even boxy. They're more like um they're more like um like semicircle-ish where oh, they've got right, flat right. bottoms and they're like super like high curved mm-hmm. tops. And they all have like omnidirectional wheels, like because streets go all, all over the place in yeah, the future. Yeah, like, like go down and shit. Yeah, so they like go like diagonals, and they fucking like go like straight vertical, like on roads and shit. So yeah, they how, all they have that similar design. How good is Colin Farrell in that movie? 
Dude, I kind of fucking forgot he's in this. He was in this. I, because it's been a while since I'd seen Minority Report, and I forgot like all the fucking people that are like in this fucking movie. He's great. He's yeah, fucking he's great. Really good. I, that was like in the middle of Colin Farrell's like heyday. Yeah. Like Phone Booth, Minority mm-hmm. Report, whatever, whatever, whatever. Other movies. SWAT. SWAT was great. I the, fucking love SWAT. The Recruit. Oh yeah. Um. I, I didn't know anything yeah. else he did because now he's kind of like almost like an indie guy. I would say he's had a very I don't know he's had some big shit lately. I mean he was in fucking uh, Harry Potter that was a big shit for him. He was in um, yeah, but he's like the Lobster like like in Bruges yeah, like that's he's true for the last like ten he's, years he's, he splits his time between the two. Well he really also been... really likes working with Yorgos because he was in that but he was also in the Killing of the Sacred Deer which was also. Right. Yorgos's movie, like put lobster in Bruges. That yeah, he's like he's like almost like he's like, okay, you know, I had half of my career or my major career doing like Daredevil, yeah, SWAT, these big movies. <laughs> Bullseye, dude. God so damn. I'm, I'm gonna go Love. stretch my acting chops and actually be able to be an Irish person. Fright Night. Oh my god. Yeah, he was great in Fright Night. He was really he great was in that movie. Well, that whole movie. Well, he was in the Gentleman. That's what he was in. He was in Guy Ritchie's movie. But to me, that's not to me. Guy Ritchie movies aren't. No, no, um, no. They're, they're definitely those, not those are like lower budget, like action flicks, you know? Yeah. Those are moves that wouldn't be made anymore. They only get made because it's kind of rich. He was in Dumbo. It was kind of big. Yeah, he does one big movie every couple of years, pay the bills. Yeah. Wait, is he in? Oh, yeah, he is in Batman. He's going to be in the Batman. Yeah, he plays. Um... I forgot. He's going to play Two Face, right? I thought he was playing someone else. Or is he playing the Penguin? I, don't know. I thought he was Penguin. I don't know. I don't know why he'd be Penguin. He's, he's too tall. Uh, I don't. I couldn't see him as a penguin. I could see him as two. Who's things. Riddler? Uh, the fucking uh, the guy from Prisoners. Um, the fuck is his name? Oh, Paul Dano. Yeah, Paul Dano. Paul, Paul that, that's a great. That's a that's a great choice. Paul Dano is so good. Oh, he is playing the penguin. What the? Okay, f- so that's, that's what I thought. Okay, that doesn't make any fucking sense. Are they going? I wonder if they're going to Danny DeVito him. Oh, he's got to. Danny DeVito is so iconic as the penguin. Like the fucking comics make. The penguin yeah. looked like Danny DeVito. Like, that's how fucking... What, what are you is. drinking, by the way? Not your father's root beer. Oh, okay. So it's I decided to pick this up. I went to Target, like, uh, Thursday or Friday. And it had been a while, because I'd just been drinking seltzer for the longest time. And I was like, I want to actually get, like, something that's not seltzer. Mm. And so... Mm. I went with this. So, you know. I love root beer. I just don't like... I, I really don't like alcoholic root beer. I just prefer regular root beer. It's funny, because I actually just... Don't like root beer that much. Root beer is amazing. Dude. I'm a, I like alcoholic root beer. All the yeah. Barks, A&W. I thought Two-Face was supposed to be in this fucking movie. Now I'm looking at the IMDb list and there's no Two-Face. I thought they said that Two-Face was good. I guess I just read a rumor and thought that that was fact. I don't know. You see that thing? It may have been last week. Mm. I don't remember. Where Matt Reeves was like, yeah, this is good. He, Batman's going to be a humanist in this movie. Oh no, I didn't see that. And I saw that. I didn't read the article. I just saw the the headline, and then a bunch of like the, you know. I feel like Batman's always been a humanist, though. But then a bunch of my like anti SJW comic book YouTubers that I watch, like I didn't watch any of the videos. They kept posting videos about about it being like, oh no, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't understand like what that's what that comment means. Batman's supposed to is going to be. I feel like this is man. exactly what Batman is. Like, I don't understand what that means. Humanism is the philosophical stance that emphasizes the value and agency of human beings individually and collectively. Um, So basically you're responsible for who you – you're responsible for your decisions and your worth as a human by yourself and in society as a whole. Here's why the SJWs are all mad or the anti-SJW people are mad because it's – Collective. Karl Marx has described yeah. communism as this, 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 and this. That's yeah. probably why. Mm-hmm. That's why. But, like, the idea, like, in terms of, like, again, not knowing the textbook definition of humanism, yeah. the, the idea that of caring about human life, like, that's, like, that's Batman. Yeah, that's Batman 100%. That's Batman. You know, I mean, he doesn't kill people for the sake of not becoming what he hates. Yeah. No. I don't know. Well, so it's also the dichotomy of his character, where it's like he cares about human life so much that he doesn't kill his villains, who would go on to take 
more human lives. So. Well, I, don't, I don't even think that it's about him caring about human life, really, in terms of his vil- I think it's more so about he doesn't want to slip because he knows that if he slips once, he'll continue to slip forever. Yeah, like that's Dare, true. Like Daredevil. He becomes a master ninja. Like kills, his father kills in the people. alternate timeline where he it, uses gun. A gun, right. Yeah. Um, so there's that. What else have you been checking out? Are you talking about um, So I was checking that out. Um, I watched Chris Lee's special. Right. How do you feel? Uh, it's good. Uh, it's fucking, it reminds me of white male black comic fucking goofy Chris. Yeah. And uh, I fucking laughed a lot. I had but a great know, time here, I, li- I liked it a lot too. Here's why I think he went back to being goofy. Because his podcast is goofy. I was going to say. gotten so much more fans, which he's already huge before. But yeah. he's gotten so much more fans because of the podcast where I think that if he was trying to do the last two specials where he ended this, the special with kind of like a mature D'Elia, yeah. I think maybe people are like, yeah, but I want you to be like, I want, I want, the, cad- I want the cadence, I want the, the fucking physical comedy, I want the, I want all yeah. that. So I can see why he would go back to that. And I thought it was yeah. great. I think it was great special. Yeah. No, I think it's great. I think... I think it's probably one of his best ones since like black white male black comic, and I still love Man on Fire and I love Incorrigible, but um, yeah, I think this is, I, I like Chris as go- I like Chris being goofy. Yeah, it reminded me a lot of like uh, I mean especially like the jokes that he was telling. It reminded me a lot of like early ten minute podcast stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was like the same type of like mentality and like the kind of jokes that he was telling was very even. He brought up the fucking dolphin shit again. That's like fucking like OG ten minute podcast, dude. Every time. He talks about dolphins. Like, even, like, there's a clip on YouTube where the dolphin clip or whatever. Yeah. And the whole time I wanted to be, like, dolphin with a handgun. Dolphin with a handgun. Dolphin with a handgun, you know. Uh, I, that's I literally, that's I li- where we come in. I literally posted a comment, like, I, I want do- the dolphin bit on YouTube or something. I was like, yeah. every time I see him talking about dolphins, I, I have to post this comment, dolphin with a handgun. Dolphin with a handgun. And we're the dolphin's henchmen, so we're the dolphin's handgun. Or like you know, fucking, it's like between that and like current event in it, and oh my god, fucking like, Shank Smith, dude, Shank, Shank Smith, Smith all day, baby. Well, even his and white male black Strange comic, old Johnson. I'm pretty yep. sure that his music that he can we walked out to was Shank Smith. Like, there's well, so many bits that yeah. people, it, it kills me because I love I love, um, I don't watch I don't listen to his podcast anymore. I, I, I couldn't listen to it. I can listen to it in like a couple weeks in a row, but after I listen to it for like four or five weeks, it gets to the point where he he gets very repetitive and he talks about the same thing over and over again, and that's just I not just, entertaining to me. At this point now, I will only watch – I'll watch all the specials, and mm-hmm. then I'll watch any highlight where he and Brian or Will or That's together. what I watch a lot. I watch, the, I watch podcast highlights from yeah. him on Fighter and the Kid. Well, from like, his podcast. Well, like yeah. Joe, he was on Joe Rogan this past week. Yeah, I saw and that. And then at the very like last hour was Brian was there too, and I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna skip. Does Brian fucking showed up late. Like yeah. it was fucking. Us. I'm gonna skip the podcast. The majority of the podcast were just Joe Rogan and Chris, and just watch Ted Min Pod. And I watched that highlight too, where they great. him and Joe were fucking making fun of Brian with his Magneto fucking uh, his Magneto yeah. shit. His his old he he's the older gayer Magneto. Oh my god, it's so great. It, the it, dynamic that him and Brian Callen have is so, well, it's so funny. special. I look, I scroll through comments on all those videos, and like, it half the comments are people like you and me who are like making ten men pod jokes. Yeah, and then only they don't get a lot of likes, but the yeah, people no. that like them are clearly people who list, have been listening to them since two thousand eleven. The fucking whatever. babies, dude. Yeah, That's well, the people. beyond I'm not a baby because I'm I'm before yeah. a baby. That's true. We're I'm OG a, bit. I'm not we're a like, baby. You know. We're what are we placentas? We're what, OG placentas. Whatever, whatever. Ten Min Pod fans were called. That's what I was. I don't um, remember. I don't think of that. That was before like fan bases had like names. You were just a I fan. Just, I really want them to get together and do more. I, I do mean, too. I they remember. Don't seem I that busy. To one. I I remember. Well, there was a there was one fighter in the kid episode. Yeah, where fucking all, where Will Sasso. There, yeah. yeah, where they were all there, and that's a great fucking like. I actually listened to that whole episode. Oh yeah, that me it's too. It's great to have all three of them together. But I remember there was a another highlight I was watching where, um, Will Sasso was on the fighter and the kid, and I guess he was talking about because I guess Brian had been spreading rumors of like a ten minute podcast like revival, and Will was like, "We're not doing that shit," and I was like, "Why? Fucking give it to me. I want it. I want put, you put it on Chris Patreon on a goddamn podcast. If you did it on Patreon." 
only Patreon, like exclusively on Patreon. Don't do it for free. Do it on Patreon. I do it. I pay five I, bucks. I, I, I pay, pay five bucks. Yeah. A- I'll pay you ten bucks a month for whatever. Just listen to them do like ten minute podcast. I would yeah. pay five bucks a month for that. And you did like four, just do four episodes a month, and literally yeah. you, can, you can do it. You can do it in one session, record yeah. the whole thing. I'm fine. I'll, I'll pay, I'd be totally fine with that. I'll pay money for that. I um, already just I go. I just gotten to the point where it's like, I go to sleep like listen to ten minute podcast because like I don't know what else to do, and it's just easy things where I could just like have it on and just like go to sleep with it, and it's like. Half the time, I just go to sleep, like, listen to the fucking old 10-minute right. podcast shit. Well, so <sighs> what else have you been checking out besides that? Um, so, besides that, uh, not too much. I mean, a couple of anime, but, like, I don't even want to even get into it because, like, all anime is about to be canceled because of the fucking coronavirus. So, right. it doesn't even matter. Um, so, fucking, the, the only thing, the other thing that matters is that I played a fuck ton of Final Fantasy Remake. Um, I'm... I think 32 to 35 hours into the game. Um, I'm on chapter. I just started chapter 15 because I took a long time in chapter 14 because I was trying to do all the, there's a couple of, there's only a couple of chapters where you end up getting side quests, but those ones take extra long because of fucking side quests. But um, up to this point, I'd been like doing them all. And then I, I figured out that like the last side quest was just like a giant boss battle. And I was like, I don't feel like doing that right now. So I just like I'm going on to the rest of the story. I just at this point I want to see what the story is and then if I feel like it I'll go back and play the boss battle, but um I feel bad cuz at that point up to like that mission I'd been like basically doing like the completionist run where I've been trying to like did all the shit so I could get all the trophies and just platinum it cuz it'd be sweet to platinum the game. Um but I don't know if I want to put that much time to in, into it right now. Because I know, like, after my first run-through, I'm not usually a guy that does, like, new game pluses. So it's, like, after my first run-through, I don't know if I'll go back or not. So I kind of just want to play it because I just really love the story so far. It's very engaging. I like all the characters. Um, I like – I don't know. I don't know much about the original Final Fantasy. Like I've said before, I've only played, like, a first little bit. And I'm now at the part in the game where my knowledge of having played the original is gone. Like everything that's happened that I've played up to in the original, we're now past that. So I don't know what the fuck's going on anymore Um, or like what's different or what's changed or anything like that. But, um, but I like it. I like what I'm playing so far. Um, I really, really enjoy it. Uh, I like the combat system a lot. I still, I've gotten a lot more used to, um, especially I think they do a really good job of certain boss battles of like making you really master the combat system. And especially one of the biggest things is the character switching. Um, Cause there's, a, there's a lot of boss battles. Like last night, one of the biggest hardest things for me so far was that um, to get new summons in the game, you basically have to like boss battle them and beat them. Mm-hmm. So the one I just got last yesterday was that I finally got Le- Leviathan, which was a hard as fuck boss battle uh, because he's only immune to lightning, or he's only weak. He's only weak to lightning, but he's also resistant to magic. So he doesn't get the actual weakness buff to it. Mm-hmm. So what you actually have to do is you have to character switch and basically play as Baird the whole time, so you can shoot him from afar while you have lightning element on your bullets, so that mm-hmm. you're still getting the physical damage and you're also getting the lightning damage on top of that. Oh, and then I had to have the ATB equipment on him so that every time he used an ATB gauge, it, uh, it automatically charged his limit gauge as well so I could actually use more limit breaks than I normally would be able to in the match. It was a lot. It was a lot. Of, it, was a lot. It, took a lot of, um, it took a lot of maneuvering of having the white materia equipped and having magnify on cloud using barriers so that all my characters are take half of physical damage and that kind of shit. and. Oh, it's fun. It's really, really fun. I'm having a great time with it. That's awesome. I mean, I uh, it sounds miserable to me. You know, that doesn't sound enjoyable to you? Nah. <laughs> it, it's, it's not that the, it, I wouldn't enjoy doing it. It sounds more like it's a chore to me right now. Um, I mean, I think a lot of the side quest stuff is chores, um, which is why, especially when it got to the last one, I was just like, I don't feel like doing this. Because you don't have to do it. Yeah. It just gives you extra stuff. And it's like, I don't I don't feel like I need this extra stuff. I mean, you get enough stuff just... 
you get enough equipment and stuff like that just playing like the regular like straight narrow story mode like right. that like the side quests aren't necessary so um yeah i mean i was just like yeah fuck this i'm playing the main story from now on so right yeah and i mean once you get past chapter 14 i don't think any of the other chapters have side quests so from here on it's basically like a straight narrow to like i'm beating the game so gotcha that's cool well i got a good decent list i'll run through my shit pretty quick like i always yeah. do I'll, I'll i'll mention the things that i think i want to talk about okay. um, and more in depth um i i watched digimon yeah so Did I, you watch I, episode three i watched episode three nice um i have a couple things i gripey okay. a couple things i really like i'll start i think with... one of your gripes was fixed though in the episode uh, three. yes kind of. yes but I, I still have other gripes in general yeah. Um, and they're minor things that don't affect story, so they're not like a big big deals. But yeah. um, I'll, I'll start with the positives first. Um, yeah. Like the animation. Yeah. Uh, really like that. Um, oh my gosh, I keep getting a cracky sound on my earbuds. It's killing me, dude. It's like stopping me from talking. Um, yeah. no, oh god. Is it me? Is it? I don't know what it is, but it's like a little. Like, oh, I just heard it a little bit. Crack like a little crackle. I don't know what it is. Oh gosh, it's like a it's like a talking talk inhibitor. I can't talk. Okay, I, I stop now. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, oh, there we go again. No, so uh, animation looks great. The uh, voice acting, besides Ag Agumon, like we talked about, I I'm fine with. Um, the pacing was weird for the first. Yeah, the pacing is very strange. That's the weirdest part. Yeah. Uh, my but my biggest gripe with it, I was really annoyed that they weren't in the digital world yet. But then I remembered that, like even in the movie, they kind of have a little beginning mission thing first, and then yeah. they months pass by, and then they go to the digital world. So I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with yeah. not seeing the digital world until episode three at the very end yeah. because they show you that. I'm fine with that because that makes. Looking back on it, I remember that part of the of the movie at least. I don't remember watching the show that part, but I remember watching yeah. the movie where that happens, where Ty is out there and he has the he fights the parrot in the middle of the city. That I, I'm mm. okay. I'm okay with that. I can get over that. Okay. What I can't get over. What I don't think I can get over it either. If, I, if you're going to talk about what I think you're going to talk what about, what do you what do you think I'm talking about? Omnimon. Well, okay. That I hate that. I yeah, hate I, that. I don't like that, and it doesn't make any sense, and I don't know why they did it. I hate having Omnimon from the jump. I yeah. hate having them be champion like it meant nothing. Yeah. I hated that. Like, you meet you meet your Digimon, and then all, all of a sudden you have to go champion. That means yeah. that champion is not an issue, and that's, that's just bad progression. That's just bad story progression. Yeah. The only thing I could see now is that now they're going to, like, walk it back, and now they're going to – but that doesn't – but then at that point, it doesn't make any sense because, like, I already saw him go fucking champion. Yeah. So, like, why the fuck can't he do it again? And why – and there should be no difficulty because it was so easy the first time. Yeah. Um, but my, a big gripe, and this is a stylistic gripe more than a story gripe, is okay. that the Digivolutions are – yeah, there's not much to them. They're in, they're in, in scene. Yeah. Which I'm, I get on one hand, because it looks cool for what it is. Yeah. It looks organic versus the actual like henshin sequence of like the fucking things yeah. spinning around. I like the thing spinning around. I thought it was a yeah. cool thing because it gave you a full glimpse of the actual Digimon. And then my other gripe is that falling right after that Digivolution scene, it gives you a fucking Digimon title card. It, like tells you. Who the Digimon is, yeah. what their powers are, what the move. It's like a. Cl it's like, hey, I like. Now it's breaking the fourth wall, and I understand that. But right. it was almost like, hey, we're in a video game, we're in a digital yeah. world, so why wouldn't you have a scan ability where yeah. it's your Digivice telling you, hey, this is so and so, and this is what they're gonna do, and this is the move set, this is whatever. Yeah, you know, I like that. I thought it was really. I mean, maybe it's because it's, it's nostalgia. Um, <laughs> But I thought that was a really fun thing to have. And not having it doesn't change the story at all, so it's fine. Yeah. But having them be uh, DNA from the fucking get-go, that's that's bad story progression. Yeah. To me, that's just like, hey, how can we sell twice again? Even yeah. though, I mean, like, I, I can't see why anyone would, like, 
not know Omnimon already. But then again, if it's made for quick kids who are fucking seven years old now. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But then it makes the me only thing know. I could see is that maybe they do like the original Pokemon shit where it's like the fucking Ho-Ho showed up in like episode one of Pokemon and then you never see Ho-Ho yeah, but again. You, but you're going to see Omnimon again. Yeah. But also yeah. like, I, I, I don't know. Whatever. It's fine. I don't know. It's um, very confusing. So I watched that, and I'm I'm fine with that. Whenever that comes out, I'll keep watching that. That's um, the saddest. That's the saddest part, though. Did you see? Yeah. Toei. But, you know, whenever it comes back, I'll. Yeah. I'll fucking that and out. fucking One Piece. I can't believe they fucking delayed One Piece. That shit hasn't been delayed since like, whenever the fuck it started. Like fucking like 1999. Like fuck, I'm, dude. I'm fine with that. I, I don't watch One Piece anymore, anyways. So I'm okay. I don't either, but that's a huge shakeup. Um, I watched that. The other big, big thing I watched was last night was The Last Dance came out. The first two episodes. This is the, oh, yeah. I wanted to watch that. This is the Michael Jordan documentary on ESPN. Yeah. Every Sunday, they put out two episodes, ten parts, and they're going to replay okay. all parts before that. Before they play the two, new, the two new parts. It's really good so far. I'm really happy with it. I love ESPN documentaries. I love ESPN films. I love 30 for 30. This is obviously the, the greatest basketball team in the history of basketball. All about it. It's really great. If you guys don't know the premise of it, is that pretty much during the last Bulls run in 97, 98 year, um, they let camera crews film them throughout the entire year. And that footage has just been sitting there at NBA or whatever for the last however Which many is years. Like, like, what the fuck? So yeah, and such... they, they've been trying to get stuff with it done before, and they've had directors look at it to try to make movies out of it, like, you know, documentaries. Yeah. It just never worked out until now. So yeah. now it's all brand new interviews with every, all the players. And now it's also using the footage. And it's it's, it's really good so far. I'm really happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that. Then I'm watching on HBO another do a docuseries, a true crime docuseries called Atlanta's Missing and Murdered Children. Oh, yeah. I'd seen that. Yeah. It's yeah. Like episode three is out now. I think came out last night. I haven't I didn't watch it yet. But I watched the first two. Again, docuseries. And I'm pretty sure this is in Mindhunter season two. Is it? Did you watch season two of My Hunter? I still haven't finished season okay. one. Okay. So. Well, in season two, um, the main one, the main profiler, like nerdy guy, goes yeah. to Atlanta and starts try trying to help them find these kids. Okay. This is the story of that. This is the true crime of that. I'm like for pretty sure. I can't okay. necessarily remember, but this is the true crime of this. Interesting. Because um, like over the course of like however many years or whatever like 60 kids are missing or killed or found dead yeah. or whatever or however whatever some insane number mm -hmm. and it's good so far i'm gonna watch episode three today if it's already out um the interview with the former cops former mayors former djs you know reporters it's, it's a really good documentary so far okay um then staying into the true crime I got two more true crime things and a couple more uh fiction things okay. uh waco the miniseries was put on Netflix. That's on Netflix? Oh. On Netflix, it's, it's Taylor Kitched as um, Koresh, Michael mm. Shannon as a hostage negotiator slash talker guy, okay. John Leguizamo as an ATF agent, and it's um, someone else in it. But like, it's um, really yeah. fucking good. It's like five, six episodes. It's pretty stacked six, cast. Six episodes. It's really fucking good. It's really fucking good, man. Like, it's like the best true crime thing I've seen since OJ. Damn, son. That's pretty high praise. You know, like, OJ, I think, is like the pinnacle of, like, this is a really yeah. fucking good true crime series. This is really, really good. This is a... I really okay. enjoyed it. it was, I couldn't... I had to watch it all the one time. I had to binge it. It was so good. Damn. Taylor, right. Taylor Kitsch, Kitsch as uh, David Koresh is so fucking good. You know, and like, yeah. you know a lot about, we know a lot about Waco just because of last podcast because they, yeah. they love, they, they love Waco. Yeah. On the last podcast because they're obviously, they're obviously, their stance on Waco is very much uh, the government fucked up. Yeah. Kind of thing. And then when you watch the show, because they're based on a couple different books, it, okay. it's so clear that like, it leaves you in this position where you're like, man, like, yeah, they kind of fucked that up. Like they really yeah. kind of, and then in the beginning of the show, they show you, the, they show Ruby, Ruby Ridge too. So they show mm -hmm. Ruby Ridge and they show Waco. And they're like, okay, yeah, they, there's some, some iffy stuff here. Yeah. Um, so watch that. Then also true crime on Netflix. They put Ooh. Manhunt Unabomber on there. I saw that. Yeah. I've been wanting and to watch that. That's, um, Sam Worthington. I will have my revenge. Of Avatar fame. And. Oh, fuck. 
That's him? He plays yeah. the Unabomber? No, he plays the FBI agent. Oh, okay. No, Paul Bettany plays the Unabomber. I was about to say, I knew whoever played the Unabomber had a face that I recognized. Yeah, the Unabomber is played by uh, Vision. Okay. It is, it's, it's not as good as Waco, but it's still pretty good. Okay. It, it's on Discovery Channel, so the pacing is still kind of... It's, they, they flash forward back in time a lot, so it's not as it's not as cohesive as Waco is, but it's still pretty good. Um, okay. There's that. Then I watched Hot Fuzz. Fuck yeah. For This is the first time I watched Hot Fuzz since the last time we watched Hot Fuzz. Yeah, which was like episode, what was it, five or six of the so, pod? Something like that. So a long That's time ago. That's very early in the pod. So I, 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 I watched it again. This, I've only seen it three times. This is my third time seeing it. It's yeah. my least favorite Edgar Wright movie. Um, I still haven't seen uh, At World's End. I need to watch that one. In terms of the Cornetto, Sean, yeah. World's End, Hot Fuzz. In okay. my, my personal order. But having seen this movie again, I don't know if I was in the right mindset when I first, the last time we watched it or what. I still think the movie's too long. I still think It's very it's long, long, yeah. It's, it's way too, too long. I think it's too long. If it, if it was cut down and tighter on the bits. Isn't it I, like two hours and it, some shit? It, it, it has to be. It has to be like two hours. It would have been like 90 minutes. Like, yeah, it was way too long. Because the whole point that they're rip, they're trying to rip off crime and action flicks. It's like, yeah, it's like two hours. And if, like, I'm all, like, if you made it like a diehard length, lethal weapon length. Yeah. It would be a great, it would be my, it would be in my top, you know, It'll be in my, higher on my Cornetto list, or whatever. It's still right. underneath Sean, so it's fighting yeah. for second. But the bits that are in it are so funny and so well written and like, you know, edited mm-hmm. and filmed. But then you go like minutes with just they're important story elements. But I'm like, okay, God, this is so much. And the movie should have ended yeah. the first time, but then it they do another like the kind of like how Dark Knight, Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight. Where like the Dark Knight, it should have ended at one point, but then they have another ending later. Like, okay, dude, this is yeah. too much, too much. Um, that's how I should have ended Hot when Fuzz. they fought the mutants, but it actually ends when he kills the Joker. He, it, right, you know, so yeah. it was a double ending. I kind of like, okay, you got to trim it up a little bit. Um, yeah. That then I watched Bosch season six, Amazon Prime. It was a good okay. season. Binged it all in one night. Then I watched a movie that I loved, I loved as a kid. I loved this movie as a kid. I, I binged it all the time. I, I ran this VHS tape through the ringer. Uh, Mask, all right. Mask of Zorro. Fuck yeah, dude. That's on Netflix. Uh, fantastic Fucking movie. Love that movie. Fantastic Antonio, movie. One of my favorite Antonio Banderas roles. It's probably my favorite right above Desperado. Yeah. And then right above that, or right below that, is Spy Kids. Dude, oh my god, him and Spy Kids is so fucking good. Yeah, so I love that's a great movie. I haven't seen the second one. Uh, 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 the the second Zorro. Yeah, well, it's the not second, as good. The second of his Zorro. So I've seen a lot of Zorros. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not as good. I I was so in love with the character of Zorro as a kid yeah. that my mom bought me a bunch of Zorro VHS tapes. Nice, like old like nineteen forties like old Zorros. And I thought they sucked. I was like, this sucks. It's all black and white. This fucking yeah. boring ass action. And I, I was actually watching some of it on Amazon. They have, they have it on Amazon. Oh, they do? I was watching oh, okay. some of them on Amazon. I'm like, you know what? I, I like it now as an adult. I can go yeah. back and I can appreciate that stuff. But as a kid, I was like, this is so fucking boring. Where's the comedy? Where's the fucking, you know, where's yeah. him cutting Catherine Zeta Jones' clothes off or where the fuck her name is? Like, where's where's him cutting a fucking Z into a goddamn rock? Oh. Right. Where's the big fire Z in the mountaintop? Where's though? Anthony Hopkins trying to play a, a Spaniard? Which was is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. So the last thing I watched uh, is, is this is a question I have for you, Zach. Okay. The last thing I watched it leads into this question leads into the last thing that I watched. Okay. I've I've seen this movie twice max. This is the okay. second time I've seen this movie. Really, oh. ever. I can I can admit that fully. Um, first time I saw it, I was in college. Mandatory viewing. Had to watch it in my film cl- my film studies class, so I had to watch it then. Before okay. then, I never watched it. Just never cared. Okay. Liked it a lot when I was 20, 19. I, li- I liked it a lot. Haven't seen it since. I'm 27 now. Okay. I watched it again. Fucking loved it. That was great. Yeah. But it made me think, what's the better 
Spielberg animal movie? Mm. Jurassic Park or Jaws? I watched Jaws. And last Um, week I watched Jurassic Park. So then after I finished Jaws this week, I was like, man, is this better than Jurassic Park? (sighs) Uh, I don't. I mean, I'm biased, so I say Jurassic Park. But I think from an unbiased perspective, I think as a suspension movie, because they're both kind of like creature feature Mm -hmm. suspension driven films. I think Jaws does a much better job of building suspension throughout the movie. I think Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park has the great scene of them on the bridge or mm-hmm. like kind of bridge near the enclosure or whatever, where the mm-hmm. T-Rex first shows up. That's a great scene. That's probably the best scene of tension throughout the movie. But then after that point, there's not too much to it until you get to the Velociraptors at the end. And that kind of goes on for like, like 20 minutes. But, it, but all see, the Raptor shit. In terms but Jaws of, is like the whole movie. But in terms of suspense, look, I, 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 I'm, my vote is Jurassic Park is better. Yeah, because I think that while Jaws is the whole movie is suspenseful. Yeah. There's multiple shark attacks. You don't see the shark till the end. All kind of shit, yeah. right? But um, just don't go in the water. Yeah, like, that's the big thing. Jurassic Park, you're sur- you're sur- not only are they surrounded, you're on an they, island. So they you can't, can't go they can't get out because the the fucking system's down. Yeah. Right. And there's multiple ones, not just one. Yeah, it's an island full of creatures. But to me, the first half of um, Jaws is better than the first half of Jurassic Park. I would agree with that. The first sure. half of like you know, he's waking up, he's having his day, he's he moved yeah. to this dude's town. This Fourth of July, they're all hanging out. That fucking Attack, snap zoom, man. The, the attacks are happening. He's kind of, and then him like you no know, meeting the marine biologist. All all that that yeah. that first half I think is better. Than I the think first everything. Half of Park. I think everything in Jaws up to them actually on the leaving boat. on the boat. Yeah, to go check down yeah. Jaws. Yeah, it's probably better. To me, the movie but I think is everything boring. in Jurassic Park once the T Rex shows up and that yeah. part of the movie kicks off, I think that's better than Jaws by hundred. Well, to me, I think the movie Jaws gets boring when they get on the boat. Yeah, like, I'm like it's oh, pretty boring. Uh, the first... that's kind of the point of it though, because it's like it's, it's just these three guys on a boat. With like they really don't know where the fuck they're going. Yeah, they're just hoping they just run into the shark at some point. Because the first half is so good, like the rushing around, the town's yeah. all it's all bright and happy. All know, the stuff on the beach is great. The, yeah. the beach stuff is great. The him him running on the rocks is great. And then him, yeah. then that little council meeting and then fucking, you know, chalkboard man. The chalkboard, yeah, it's all great. That, that's all fantastic. But then the boat part, I'm like snoring. Yeah, and that's the part that I should be like. Oh man, how did they get to do this? I'm like, okay, yeah, I fucking, but not, but that's not to say that the first half of Jurassic Park is boring. It's just like, it's a yeah. lot of fucking setup. It's a lot, yeah. There's a lot to it, and there's even a and because there's there there's the setup to get onto the island, and then there's the setup on the island to actually to explain the island, dinos- yeah, to explain, to explain the, the island. islands, to explain the dinosaurs, to actually set up what dinosaurs are actually going to yeah. show up. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot. There's like yeah, there's Jurassic Park has like way more set up but it also has a lot more to set up absolutely in comparison to jaws jaws really only has to set up a shark and and that's obviously the the concepts in jurassic park are infinitely more in in depth and complex than hey there's a fucking shark yeah you know but i I thought the character of um what's his name the um the biology guy oh yeah yeah i think he's Uh, that's a great that's a great character fuck is his name i don't remember that's a great character because the whole time yeah. he's like, you know, Noah the, guy. The way he plays it, it was it was really good, and obviously Brody's really great too. And then I thought that people everywhere I look at Jaws stuff, people really love um, what's his name? People really love the captain. Well, I don't remember his name. Quake, Quake, Quaint, Quaid, 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 Captain Quaid, isn't it? Quaint, Clint, Quaid, Clint. It's Q something, something with a Q. Jaws, Captain. Quint. Quint. Heck. Sam Quint? Yeah. Sam. Sam? Sam? Sam Quint. Sam Quint? Martin yeah. Brody. Sam, Sam Quint, right? Yeah. I think it's Sam Quint. Yeah. They just call him Quint. 
Yeah. I just see um, Quint. Um, he has that great speech, though, where he talks about in World War II when he was on the USS Indianapolis and all of his fucking friends and everybody that he had ever known for the past, like, two years gets fucking eaten by sharks. Yeah. Ugh. That shit but, gives me shivers. But, like, is that better or worse than Life Finds a Way? Life Finds a Way. It's it's Life Finds a Way is infinitely more catchy and simple than and the shorter. Indianapolis. And sh- a lot shorter. You know, I, literally I know. a sentence compared to like a whole monologue. Obviously, they're two very different movies, but like in terms of coming from the same director, with like a similar kind of theme of like you versus an like animal world. Yeah. I, you I, versus nature. If I could just make the last, if they can just remake Jaws. <laughs> With the same actors, bring him back to life, and or no, bring no, bring him all back from the dead. Well, not even. Well, just not do um, Star Wars Rogue One CG on their mm-hmm. faces of different actors, and reshoot the last half in Jurassic Park style, but keep the mm-hmm. first half as the original Jaws and just splice it together, and maybe I'll be fine. Okay. So I'll see that. that's uh, what I have watched this week. Okay. Let's, Free solid list. Thank you. Let's yeah. uh, hit some. The, we have a couple things of news before we couple go to our topic. Um, Zach, take it away, man. The big um, thing. guys. A special announcement. We got some Dune news, baby. Um, the only Dune news really is that they released pictures from it and they look fucking great. Um, you got fucking Timothy Chalamet being on a beach with his little nose shit. Um, you got. Everybody looks fucking great. You got fucking Rebecca Ferguson. You got fucking Azur Isaac in this fucking dope ass fucking sci fi armor. God damn it. I'm so fucking excited for this movie. You got fucking Josh Brolin. Jason Momoa shows up for a hot second doing whatever the fuck Jason Momoa does. Do you see that shit where he talks about how his character is Han Solo? I saw that. And I was like, that's not true. I was like, I've all, I haven't even finished the book and I know that's not true. I So I like all the costumes are great. Yeah, they look they fantastic. They look fa- fantastic costume design. Looks it looks yeah. amazing. And it's going to look even cooler in the movie, I know, when the oh, special it's effects gonna look so fucking cool. It's going to look great. Um, oh. I didn't know that this many people were in it. Dude, I I mean, and the funny part is that, like, there ha- even the amount of people that have been announced are, like, not in this picture. Because, like, they're, Dave Bautista doesn't show up in these pictures. Fucking... Um, the Scar Scar's dad, he's not in these any of these pictures. He plays the fucking main villain. Um, you got a bunch more people that still haven't even shown up yet. Uh, this it's a fucking stacked cast. Look between Oscar Isaac, Josh, Bro- I didn't know Zendaya was in it. Yes, I forgot that Zendaya was in it. Honestly. Also, I also forgot that Timothy Chalamet plays Paul. Yeah. Cause I remember, I remember when I found that out. I remember I keep I keep relearning this. I keep relearning that he's Paul. You keep relearning that? I, I remember every time we talk about it, about Dune, or have a Dune update, or a Dennis a Dennis Dune update. Dennis I, Dune. I always forget that he's he's playing Paul, and I feel like every time we talk about Dune, or in some sense, I relearn it, and I get pissed off every time, and I'm still pissed off about it. Except Why? For God, I mean, I haven't honestly watched like any movie that I he's don't, been in, I don't honestly. I like him. But... I do not like him. I don't like yeah. him as an actor. I think he... Not, not his look. Well, first off, first off on his look. Yeah. Now, I haven't read Dune. Yeah. I will not read Dune. <gasps> not because I have anything against Dune. I don't want to hurt my head right now with an omniscient third-person voice. Yeah. I mean, I've... Yeah, it's it's hard to wrap your head around. That's just... I don't want to read that right now, you know? Yeah. That's why I'm re- right now I'm reading first-person crime stuff, because it's easy to read. Yeah. Um. So... Can he really be a hero? The way he, how small he is. I don't know. I mean, he played the fucking uh, the Scotsman thing, the King or whatever, where he played the the fucking it. sequel to uh, Braveheart, right? That's what, that, a, that's what that fucking is. Is a sequel to Braveheart? Never, no, I was thinking a different movie. But he's Henry V or whatever. I I don't know. And like, I really like Kyle MacLachlan. Kyle McLaughlin, right? Twin Peaks yeah, guy? Yeah, Kyle McLaughlin. I liked him a lot as Paul. Kyle McLaughlin. I thought he looked cool. I thought he yeah. made sense. he was a tall guy or whatever. He had, I mean, he wasn't like a built man or anything like that. I think he was in his, like, 30s, though, wasn't he, when Dune happened? 
I feel like, like 20, it. maybe twenty. I don't know, twenty five. I don't know. I have no idea. I have no concept. Maybe. Oh, never mind. He was younger than when he was in Twin Peaks. So. Oh yeah, Twin Peaks came out. I was right after. Um, but even with that being said, if I don't, me not liking the actor, generally speaking, I'm gonna give him a chance because it's it's Dennis, and yeah. I can't not watch everything he does. And with that being said, maybe I'll like him in this movie, which I'm I'm sure I will. And everyone else looks fantastic and is so good in it. I mean, yeah. I don't know who anyone is. All I know, uh, from what I remember of reading the book, now it's been probably about six months since I actually like read the book. Um, so I'm probably going to have to start all over again because that's way too confusing to just jump back into. But um, Oscar Isaac is Timothy Chalamet's dad. Rebecca Ferguson is his oh, mom. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Oscar Isaac is his Oscar pop. Isaac is playing P- Timothy Chalamet's dad. Yeah, he's his pop pop. He looks nothing like him. He's his pop pop. That Look dude is that. that dude is so Look at Hispanic. That, beard. that dude is Look at so that beard. Hispanic. He's got, they made it, I think they made a point to make their hair look kind of similar. Like that would be enough to trick people. What does Rebecca Ferguson look like? Shut the fuck up. In this movie? Shut the fuck up. That's playing his mom. That's his mom. And then, and then Oscar Isaac is his dad. Yeah. Josh Brolin is like his, uh, his like swords master. I would believe it if Josh Brolin and Rebecca Ferguson were his parents, not Oscar fucking Isaac. No. Uh, Josh Brolin is like his, uh, he's like Oscar Isaac's like right hand man, and then he's also like, uh, he's also one of the people that like teaches uh, Paul about like mar- uh, martial combat and shit like that. Can we also agree? And I think we have before, but let's do it again here. It's on the record. All right. That Paul is the worst name for a fucking hero character. It's a terrible name. It's plain Jane as fuck. Doesn't like exude excitement or adventure or anything like that. It's very strange. Like, I, there's no, I have nothing about Paul makes me go, you know what? That's our man. That's yeah. our hero right there, Paul. Yeah, it's very strange. Well, are you, how, how do you feel about overall? Are you, when's this coming out, by the way? Fucking jacked, dude. I'm so jacked. Oh my God. It's coming out in like November. I think it's like right, it's either right before or right. It's got to be like right before Thanksgiving. There's no way they do it after Thanksgiving. They want that fucking holiday money. Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Should I? I think, really... I think it's like, oh, fuck. I think it's like November, like nineteenth or something. Oh no, I was wrong. They must have moved it back again, motherfuckers. Now it's saying December eighteenth. <gasps> they did a silent delay. Those sons of bitches. Should I read it before it comes out? Uh I honestly don't think it'll make that much of a difference. I honestly probably think more people will understand it as a movie than as a book because I think. One of the problems even for me reading the book is like what is like what you talked about is that there's a lot of omniscient narrator and there's a lot, especially like within chapters even, there's a lot of like switching perspectives and then suddenly you're thinking of one character and then in the middle of a paragraph you'll switch to the thinking of another character. It's very whip it, it gives you bad whiplash. Like I I've never experienced whiplash while while reading a book before, but like Dune gives me like mental whiplash. Right, and that's the main reason why I haven't read it or tried to. Yeah, I think it'd honestly be a lot better to just watch it. I think it'd be easier to understand with, like, a cohesive narrative that, like, in front of you. You're not going to have, like, an omniscient narrator. Like, I mean, a movie is, like, is a movie. Unless you're trying to do some, like, fucking weird experimental shit. But, like, it's Dennis. Like, he doesn't do that. He makes straightforward stories for the most well, part. Well, it's, it's... He's got symbolism in there, but his stories are still, like, easy to follow. And, well, I mean, and this the thing that I'm torn on is that like I'm majoring in English. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like I should be able to fucking read this book, <laughs> you know? But, that, but that, I look at the book and go, oh, headache. It's a headache central. But I feel like it's gonna be. That's gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get. The, I'll get the better purist. You know what I mean? I mean, it always, I mean, I guess it just comes down to what side of the argument you're on of whether books are just always better than movies. They are. Then I think you know what you have to do. Well, it depends on the movie, I guess. Because <laughs> sometimes it's not true. You know, fuck. Like, That's true. I don't know. Okay. Let's... Like Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter. I haven't finished Harry Potter yet. The books? Yeah, really? So I'm, I'm, book, wow. I'm, I'm on book three. Oh, my God. 
I'm on book three and I'm fucking bored. Oh, that's true. I forgot you've bought that box. I think three is actually the most exciting one. The Prisoner of Azkaban is like the most. Actually, that's not true. Goblet of Fire is the most exciting one. When they're actually in the Triwizard Tournament, that shit's fucking dope. I mean, I'm like. I'm Honestly, the fifth is the most boring one for me. I well, the fifth was so boring to me when I was reading as a kid that like I put it down and didn't try to pick it back up again until book six was coming out, and I was like, I can't read this book. It's too boring. I got halfway through book three, like a year and a half ago. I remember yeah. you bought the boss set. Yeah, box I, I had You're the like, boss Zach, set. I'm going to read it. And I was like, I, all right, I'll read it with you. And then I think I read the first one and didn't read any of the others. Yeah, I read the first two. I was like, okay, here we go. And I read, I got to three and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll pass on this. <laughs> and it wasn't bad. I'm just fucking, I was just bored. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of the books, a lot of her books are just like boring until they're not boring. But to, to get to the not boring parts, you have to wade through a lot of shit. I don't know, man. All right. Hey. A lot of classes that don't matter, and I'm like, why the fuck am I even, like, hearing them or seeing whatever the fuck they're doing in fucking divination class? I don't give a fuck that he's, like, reading tea leaves. I don't care. But that's for the world building, bro. <sighs> I don't care. You already had, like, four books of world building at that point. Like, why the fuck do I need more world building? That's so that the fucking nerds could be like, yeah, we're going to fucking, you know. I'm going to be the professor of divination class. Yeah. That's and for the, that fucking LARPers. And so that the, you know, the, uh, what's it called? People can be like, what class are, they're in this the, class at that point. Those Pottermore bitches, whatever it's, the fuck. Exactly. Yeah. Shit, I'm trying to oh. fucking buy these VHS tapes real quick. Oh, shit. What VHS tapes? Some Conan. Fuck yeah, dude. This guy's selling them. I'm cult. trying to like log into my PayPal, which is why I keep looking at my phone because he just sent, he sent me a message on fucking PayPal. I'm trying to like, oh, I'm I gotta send it to him real quick, but it's being a pain <gasps> in the ass. Dude, fuck. What? Speaking of which, I forgot something. Go I had big news. Go ahead. I got some Rocco Bodhi big news. Hold on, give me a sec. Yeah, this is a podcast, guys, on the internet. We're two best friends get together, talk about pop culture news, Rocco movies. Rocco Bodhi big news over here, boys, ladies and gents. All right, hold on. I'm gonna get my get my headphones back in. We got a. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we're back with a fig update. We got him, boys. We in here. Okay, so actually, I used some of my tax or my fucking stimulus money because I already have a job and I still kept mine. So right. Sorry. But uh, I spent a little bit of it on some um, some cool Nendoroids that I saw on Amazon. So I bought this one. I haven't taken them out of the box yet. I haven't taken the time to actually try to assemble them. Right. But they're uh, from a mobile game that I've been playing. Um, and it's fucking uh, the King Arthur, okay. the fucking evil version of King Arthur. Uh, and she's got a fucking, I don't know if you can see it, but she's got like a motorcycle and shit. I can't see it. Dog. She's got a fucking uh, burger and shit, and like, yeah, I'm fucking down for it. So she's super cute. I got her. And then I also got the evil version of fucking uh, Jean d'Arc, who's fucking sick. Um, she looks super fucking rad. I love her. She's a sassy bitch. Um, she's got fucking uh, dark flame magic, and she's got a fucking black sword, and she's, uh, yeah, she's fucking sick. They're both from a, a storyline in the mobile game where they take place in uh, fucking Shinjuku and they both get alternate outfits that are hot as hell. So I had to buy them. Right. And then I've also got a Gilgamesh coming in in the next like week or two because um, all of these were like 50 bucks on Amazon. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'll spend like 150 bucks on three, three figs. That's like the average amount I would spend at a con. So that feels right. Um, so yeah, I've got him coming in in his fucking gold armor with all of his... Fucking noble phantasm, noble phantasm glory. So I'll probably show him off. I think he's supposed to come in like this week or next week. So hopefully by the next time we record, I'll have him in and I can show him off. Maybe I'll yeah. get him out of the box. But yeah, that was my fig update. Oh, I sick. wanted to say that before I forgot. I'm a, uh, I bought what did I buy recently? Fig wise, I've been trying to hold off on my fig stuff because I'm trying. I'm moving to a new place soon. Yeah. So I'm trying to save all my all my stimulus stuff. I'm saving all my cash to pay for moving shit. And yeah. then once I get in settled, 
I'm going to my 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 office room. So I, we are, it's a four bedroom place. Yeah. The one bedroom is going to be straight up my nerd room, my toy room. Fuck yeah, dude. Which is why I'm buying these VHS tapes. And I'm I'm trying to make this place look like fucking 1997. You know, what I mean that's my goal. Um, so that's cool though. I'm, I'm not, I don't have any Nendoroids. I don't, I'm not a Nendoroid guy. I I wasn't a big guy uh, of them until I think about a year ago that I started seeing and I'm like they're a little smaller than I'm used to with my things, but the art the sculpting is so great on them and they've got especially for like I mean it's it's especially for anime characters. I mean they're like a great deal. Most of them are in, in between like 40 and 80 bucks, which is like for a figure of this quality that's like you know, with all the accessories of stuff that comes with, the, like, a Figma. I mean, it's a pretty great deal. And they've got a lot of characters that I've liked. I've also seen that they have an, Alf- an Alphonse that I really want to fucking get my hands on. Because he comes with, uh, you can take his chest plate out and he's got little cats that you can put in there. And it's fucking sick. So, yeah. So are got you, a couple of things I got my eyes on. Are you trying to get back in the Fig game? Or just, just a couple here and there, just got some extra cash. Money? I think just a couple. I think I think just a couple here and there, you know. I mean, it's just like, you know, I'm living on my own. I don't got a lot of expendable income. This is more of like a splurge purchase, splurge purchase, because I knew that stimulus money was coming in. Right. So I don't think I'm going to be buying like, you know, a fig every week or something like that. But, you know, maybe maybe every other month or so, if I find the right deal and I find the right, the right character at the time. I want to get, I haven't even played it, but I want to get her because she looks so cute that they have, um, they have fucking Isabella from fucking uh, Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons. They've got a Nendoroid of her out, and, like, she looks great. Like, I, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, fuck, that looks really good. I would want to buy that. So, yeah. Get my eyes on some things. That's cool, man. When are you going to open those figs? Yeah, I'm going to open them. I just haven't taken the time to – because I also, like, if, once I'm going to open them, I know I'm going to have to place them somewhere, and I haven't figured out – where, where in my apartment where I want to place them yet. So I'm not I'm not going to take them out until I know where I'm going to put them. So Right. So I haven't taken them out quite yet. But they I will come you. out of the box eventually. Cool. Um, I can't figure out how to fucking send this shit friends and family. I'm like dying. Damn. I'm like On looking at PayPal? PayPal trying to figure this shit out. I can't I'm honestly it. no help because I like never use PayPal. I'm like dying, bro. I'm like literally Googling this shit. I can't figure it out. Damn. I don't I'm know. Gonna, I don't know, dude. I can't. I, I'm like, I feel like an idiot right now. I am. I like literally like a fucking old man when it comes to PayPal. I, I know nothing. I know nothing. I don't want to learn anything because as soon as I learn it, I'm probably gonna start using it, and that's bad. Well, it's, it's a bad it's, habit to start. Put it to my 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 account, my bank account. So that's how I buy a lot of yeah. my toys. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Shit, hold on. Sorry, Zach. Sorry, podcast. No, you're good. Now I'm just looking at Nendoroids. Fuck. <sighs> They're all so good. <sighs> Damn. I'm going to be here like all fucking day just fucking looking at these. It's weird, though, because you can only buy them from Amazon. Because, like, the other company, I don't know. I'm very wary about, like, buying from foreign companies. I don't know. I'm just not something that, like, sits super well with me a lot of the times. Because you can buy a lot from, like, just, like, directly buying from, like, Good Smile. But, like, but I don't know. I'm also, like, iffy about the conversions. I'm not super big on, like, because I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what the dollar to donuts ratio is. Well, I'll tell you this. If you go to PayPal, it, it will convert it for you in PayPal and tell you. Oh, it will? Okay. Because I, I bought some some my, some expensive figs from China, from, from Interbay, okay. which is a Chinese company. Okay. And, um, yeah, it was like 500-something HKD or some crazy number. But in, in hmm. USD, it was only, you know, 180-something dollars or whatever. Oh, okay. So, um, but, like, as long as your the website is – you know, reliable. I would, I would definitely look at Reddit searches. I would definitely look at, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And that would give you, um, a better idea, but good smile, you know, good smiles. That's a legit place. You can buy them from, yeah. um, you know, fucking, uh, what's it called? Hobby league, hobby, Japan, HLJ, all these things like that for, for, for Japanese mm. figs. Um, and a lot of eBay sellers are legit resellers too, that, you know, 
well, you send them money and they'll go buy stuff from the, the stores in Japan and ship it to you, but it might cost a little more money. Okay. So. Let me. You figured out? I, I don't know. It was, it's similar. Um, I sent it as personal, so that should be the same thing. Okay. I'm in the middle of doing business on the online, so I'm sorry, guys. I'm doing business on the podcast. Hey, man. You gotta never, never stop it's, stopping. It's you know Conan one and two for eight dollars VHS. I got, I just got. You gotta do it, do it dude. Do That's it, like man. a fucking deal. You, you got to get it. it. I just bought yesterday. I bought because I'm buying VHS again for my nerd room. Mm-hmm. Speed, Point Break, oh, fuck Die yeah. Hard box set for the first three. Nice. Um, and then I bought Lethal Weapon. Ooh. And something else, but I forgot what else I was. But I got a couple, got a couple, couple VHS tapes. Nice. So, all right, I dig it. We'll stop fucking talking about fucking dumb shit. And get back to the pod. Um, the rest of the news I don't care about. Want to go into our topic, dude? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we are. We've arrived. Four twenty. Blaze it. We're officially here on the podcast, License to View, talking about our favorite theme park memories. Yes, it's been do it. four weeks, if so not. It's been prophesied. In the it making. Foretold in the ancient text of uh, podcastium. Dumb. That's it. We've been, yeah. we've been hinting at it for weeks. Here mm. we are, finally on the podcast talking about theme parks and what they mean to us and our memories from youth and from future to talk yes. about theme parks. Now, my first question to you, Zach, is yes. this. Tell me. What was the first theme park you went to ever? And how old were you? The first one I remember, the first theme park I remember going to was I remember going to, um, Disney World, specifically Animal Kingdom. And I remember, I only, I think I probably went to it beforehand, but I specifically remember it because I went the year the Animal Kingdom introduced that fucking dinosaur ride, baby. Fucking was on that shit fucking year one. Woo! How, so, and so, what, how, what year was that, if you had to guess? Ah, uh, fuck. Um, it was when we were still in Indiana. It was probably... I'd have to say like probably 2001, 2002-ish. So I think I was in kindergarten in 98, 99. So I think I think I was in like second or third grade when that happened, I think. It sounds right to me. Yeah. And when, sounds- when you look back on it, like how how was it? The ride sucked. But the toys were fucking <laughs> sick as fuck. That's because I remember the ride. The ride was fine, but I remember afterwards that we went to the fucking Animal Kingdom gift shop and they had the fucking sick dinosaur toys. Did from y'all the drive? Ride. Did y'all drive? Um. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we drove. So we you, had to because we didn't. I never went on a plane until I was in like sixth or seventh grade. Like for a school trip, that was like the first time I ever went on a plane. So we had to have drove. So, how many people did you go with? It would have been my whole family. Like, like um, the entire, been... like the enti- like even your cousins and your aunts and shit. Um, I think it was. I think if I remember correctly, I don't think Jacob was born yet, or he was like a little kid. Maybe he was like a baby. If at the at the young at the oldest, he was like maybe like three or four years old, like still still a toddler. Um, but, um, I remember, I think when I went, it was me, Lucas, Jacob, my mom and my dad, I think my cousins, Brittany and Courtney were there. And then maybe Kylie, I know like my uncles and my aunts didn't come except I think maybe my mom's sister, because my mom is really close with her sister. She like does a lot of stuff with her, even like right now, like she like goes trips with her all the time. So I'm pretty right. sure my aunt was there, but I think that was the only other one of my like, of my like aunts and uncles that was there. I think everybody else, I think it was just because a lot of times when we were young, and I mean, 
this is what makes me think it because my parents would basically, especially when we lived in Indiana, my parents were basically the ringleaders, specifically my mom. My mom likes to be in charge of planning and stuff like that. So my parents basically became in charge of all of the munchkins all the time, like doing right. trips and shit like that. So I, I feel like, yeah, we probably drove, we probably drove, my aunt probably did go because we had, because if my cousins were there, we had to have taken two separate cars. Right. So I think we were in one car, and then my aunt and all of my cousins were in the other. So car. I'm just thinking, dude, like that's a fucking long drive. It's a long drive, dude. The long Because even from like here, it's like 16 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like 12 hours from South Carolina to Indiana, and I think if you if you cut out South Carolina, and I think if you cut through Georgia, I think it's still an extra like four hours. So when you look back on that trip as yeah. a 26 year old person, yeah, all those years ago. Yeah. Right. What stands out? What would you can you remember what you thought when you first stepped into the theme? Like this is a place where kids dream about going. Yeah. How, do you remember how you felt? And oh. did you get a Dole Whip? Did a what? A Dole Whip. Did you get one, or do you know what a Dole Whip is? I can't remember. I Dole... honestly haven't been to Disney World like since I was like this old. Like I don't even remember like any of Dole that shit. A, was that a, ice cream? A pineapple like frozen treat. Dole Whip. I yeah. don't think. No, I never got one of these. Did you get a churro? I think we got churros. We also, my parents were very big, especially my mom, because she was the party planner, was that she was very big, because I think this was back in the day when they would still, like, let you bring in, like, like food, like, I think in her purse, like, she would sneak, like, sandwiches and shit like that, because mm. she was very big on, like, when we were younger, now when we're older, like if we go somewhere, she doesn't mind like buying stuff for where from wherever. But like, I remember especially when we were younger, she was big on like, we're not gonna buy anything in the park. We're gonna bring our own lunch. And I think actually, you know what? I think actually no, this is exactly what happened because what we would do, we would go in, and we would like do stuff until like twelve or one or whatever. And where, wherever time we were all hungry, we would go out to our car. Have mm. lunch in the trunk because a bit, my parents always had an SUV because that's what we liked for the family size and like being able to drag kids around and shit like that. So we'd eat lunch in the trunk, and then once we were done eating lunch, we would go back into the park. Right. So that was what we did. So we didn't really buy a whole lot of like food stuff in there. Like she would let us buy like, like I said, like she would let us buy like toys and stuff like that, and only like a couple of things because there's so many of us. Like she can't be buying like everybody like everything that they wanted. Right. Um, but um, but yeah, that was definitely the deal. Yeah, we would go out, we would eat lunch, and then once we ate lunch, we would go back inside. So when you look back though, like, what stands out the most? Was it? Dude, like I had a fucking the thing that that just popped in my head again was uh besides the dinosaur thing, which was like cool, but like the thing that like got me going back to the park and like wanting me to go back to theme parks and like uh like just you know, be in that world was I fucking had the autograph book and I had the mm. autographs of like all the fucking Disney mascots. And I was like, even as a kid, I was like, I want to go back. I want this shit filled out because even then, like I didn't have it all filled. And I was like, I right. want every single character to fucking sign my autograph book. And I want this to be mine forever. And well, now did, I don't even know where it is. So did your like, in, cause, cause we've said this before in the podcast and I'll, yeah. re I'll reiterate this now as we're going into theme park topic is yes. that uh you're a communist which is you're a theme park you're a right you're a roller coaster rider because roller coaster I think riders you mean i am a capitalist and the head of the food no, chain because, because i am willing to risk everything roller coaster riders cool. always try to honestly neg non roller coaster riders into riding roller coasters i'm not one of those people jason i I decry the fact that you would paint me with such a broad brush. They, they always go, hey, you're here. You paid the money. You might as well always says that. You know why? You know what I don't – you know I don't do that. You know why I don't do that? Why? Because my cousin is actually the same way. that She does not like riding mm. roller coasters. Gotcha. And so I very learned from a very early age that like some people just don't like that shit. And that's fine. She would go on like the little roller coasters and shit that's like in the kiddie park. Right. And she liked the teacups. She was also the one where, like, she didn't like roller coasters, but she really fucking loved, like, the towers. Like, that was, like, her shit. Like, she loved Jeez. going on the towers. So, but and I don't know why. I don't know why that was better for her, but it was. So did, did your enjoyment of stupid rides um, start there? <laughs> start yes, that trip? When I was a kid. I wanted to fucking be on those fucking rides. You know what? It was weird, though. I don't think it started at Disneyland because, honestly, Disneyland, from what – 
at least from when I was a kid, I don't remember Disneyland having that many rides, or that many good nothing, rides. Nothing least. crazy, like a nothing like crazy, other, like a theme park. Theme Not park. like the place that I fucking loved going to as a kid, and it was right next door to me was fucking Cedar Point, baby. So hold on, so we went to Cedar Point all the time. I want to. So your first theme park was Disney. Our first theme park was Di- the first one I remember was Disney. Okay, but the ones we went to all the time, we we went to Cedar Point all the time, and we also went to, um, it was called. Holiday World, I think. I want to say it was Holiday World. There was also Indiana Beach. Indiana actually has like a lot of theme parks that are close by it. Right. Indiana Beach, I remember, because Indiana Beach had like one of my favorite roller coasters of all time, which is the Beast, which was in a theme park filled with like metal roller coasters. This was the one roller coaster that was still all wooden, and it was the fucking best i love this fucking roller coaster so like, i've never been to cedar point and i probably will never go to cedar point but from my knowledge of that park chain whatever you want to call it it's pretty much like it's a roller coaster roller coaster cedar place. point is the roller coaster park like if you right. love roller coasters if you don't like roller coasters like don't even go to cedar point because that's right. literally like that's what it's th- like disney world is there for like the characters and universal is there for like the movies and shit like that Cedar Point is there because you fucking want to get high up in the air and you want to go fucking fast. You want to get right. on the Millennium Force and you want to go on a roller coaster that takes like 10 seconds for you to complete because it goes that fucking fast. You know, look, when I was a kid um, growing up in D.C., yeah, we had Six Flags America. I never actually so, went to Six Flags. So Six Flags America was my first and like my dad and my parents had season passes. Mm-hmm. Or summer passes or whatever. Summer, summer passes, I guess, would it be. Where we yeah. would go all the time. And we would bring my neighbor, who was my best friend at the time. Mm-hmm. We were both we were both probably six, seven, eight. In that, in that, from those, those age ranges. And we would go all the time to Six Flags. We had this, the passes. And memory-wise, yeah. Six Flags is, is like Cedar Point in terms of like there's a ton of fucking roller coasters. Yeah. There's also water stuff, right? Lazy River, fucking, Mm -hmm. uh, what's the thing called with the wave pool? So, you know, there's things that I could gravitate to. But for a while, I thought that I was going to be a normal American boy. I thought I was going to be a normal person. What Um, happened, Jason? Well, I went to Looney Tunes Land. Uh, okay. Which is in um, Six Flags America. I'm not sure if all Six Flags have this. I've only been yeah. to one Six Flags, which is Six Flags America. Okay. So a section of the kid area is Looney Tunes themed. Or was at the okay. time. I don't know if it is now. And they have a kid's roller coaster with a drop, a little tiny ass drop, and a little fucking turn, and a little bank, and all this kind of shit. Okay. First roller coaster ever. Now I've mm-hmm. known, I've seen my dad get on a billion of them. My dad mm. fucking loves them, right? So I'm like, well, shit, if my dad likes it, why the fuck wouldn't I like it? So me and my friend get on. We're the only two kids on this roller coaster in the first cart, front seat of like four or five carts or whatever. Yeah. And I'm getting nervous. Now, Now I'm the, we're getting up there and I'm fucking getting nervous. Sp- okay. I'm sweaty. Spaghetti stains on my shirt. Oh, damn. <laughs> So I'm getting nervous, right? Arms are sw- arms are heavy. Yeah, Thumb exactly. On your shirt already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got so you. So he says, the kid who, looking back on it, was probably like 14. You know? Yeah. I was like, yeah, whatever. If you get nervous, just tell, let us know, and we'll stop the ride. Literally, up top of the bank, hands stop are the up, ride. hands are up. Done. I'm done. I'm done. Drop it down. Pull me around. From that moment on. Mm. It's been a no-go. And I've given it a shot multiple okay. times since then. But Six Flags, as a kid, it became... And there's no good food at Six Flags. I mean, at least not that I remember. I don't it remember became that. the Wave Pool, Lazy River. Those were my jams. My dad, who's a fucking fiend. You and my dad would fucking love rides. Right? My sister, who's younger than me, is a fucking... I guess it skipped kids or whatever. Because my sister is a fucking... Loves them, right? My mom hates them, but I hate them. My sister loves them. Mm. Right before they opened Superman at Six Flags, Ooh. there was like deaths. Like people were dying on it. Like people were like falling out of it like and dying oh, on damn. the Superman ride, right? Which at the time was like the highest drop or whatever. I do remember that, yeah. And like 
they opened it again after they fixed it for however long. And my dad's like fucking in line. He wrote it like five times, you know, and that recently my, my parents had their 32nd anniversary. Right. So we're all yeah. at dinner. You no. Know, and I was like, dad, h- how would you do this? You know, that like, not even like two weeks before or whatever, some granny like fell to her death on this roller coaster. And then you're just in line. He goes, yeah, it was fun. I'm like, yeah, communist, communist, fucking yeah. bullshit, you know? It's fucking fun, dude. Your dad's and, right. It's fucking and fun. Because he would go, he would go ride like the Batman and Joker ride, or like yeah. if you're in like the Warner Brothers area or whatever, the ride would like come around in front of you. So I'm like staring at the roller coasters that's coming around me and being yeah. like, no, this is never going to happen. And my dad's like, he, at the time, he, he had to go by himself. Yeah. You know, he has a wife and a son. My sister wasn't born yet who just don't fucking care. Yeah. You know, so he's like solo. Now he has my sister who's 16 to go with him and like, you know, be dumb. Yeah. So he's happy now. But be I'm, adventurous, I think. I mean, I, I, the synonym is dumb. But the idea that like. It's a synonym for adventure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. The idea that like. The getting on a roller coaster. But, so my first memory of Six Flags is like. Theme parks are bad. Theme parks are bad, and they always will be bad. Now, they're fun because... Theme parks are great. They're so fun. But the idea of... It's what people are missing now, which is like the idea of getting together in a communal fashion and yeah. standing in line to get scared for seven seconds, ten seconds. There's a, there's a bonding <sighs> factor oh. there, and I understand that. But the same thing that you have with your friends, Zach, or our friends... like a, We've been to the fair together. Haven't we all been to the fair together? Yeah. Where y'all have ridden rides with like Shaquille and those guys, or whatever, our, yeah. our other buddies. Y'all have a communing factor of being afraid on this rickety bullshit traveling circus. I have the same communal factor when I'm in line to buy deep fried Oreos. And that's the equivalent to me. I love deep fried Oreos. <laughs> See, that's my thing, though. I can cross the aisle. I like both. I like to get on the fucking ride but and have listen, the adrenaline pumping. Listen. And I love to have my blood veins pumping while i'm eating some deep fried oreos listen man i'll build oh. the wall and i'll put the maga hat on you can't come over here <laughs> am i fucking louisiana you about to fucking it, it, build the wall build around the wall. this whole fucking state so so in terms of like what's every park that you've been to so i'm trying to think right now because i'm i'm looking up I like as we're having this conversation i'm like remembering some so cedar point was the big one that i remember i remember holiday world as well i'm gonna send you this because this was like this is basically like it's it's very much like Six Flags almost, where it's um it's got the the roller coasters, but it also had a bitch in um it also had a bitch in uh, water park area that we went to all the time, because this one wasn't too far away from us either. Um, and then I also um back when uh I went to church uh back in the day uh in high school, there was a couple of times, especially one of the big trips that the youth group would take was that we went to the Virginia theme park King's Dominion because they also oh, had like a God. big they also had a big um, d- um fucking uh they had a big like a uh, youth concert series thing that happened in the summer so we would like so it was like the big youth group trip where we'd all go there we'd spend the day in the theme park like doing shit and like fucking you know taking names and then at night you get the concerts so you watch a couple of shows and then you fucking go to sleep and you wake up and you fucking do it again the idea that there's a park like called King's Dominion where yeah. it's just to go and like ride roller coasters just makes me mad. Yeah. So what's the best roller coaster you've been on? Um, I think the best one is probably from Cedar. I It's either from Cedar Point or it's from, hold on, I gotta find Indiana Beach because I think Indiana Beach had the beast. I gotta find what, I gotta find their shit. Hold on. Let me see their roller coasters. Because I was looking through Cedar Points, and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that one. I remember that one. But it's also been a while, so I also know. Been a while. Oh, no. Indiana Beach got closed. Oh, Fuck, shit. dude. Motherfucker. Oh, this Makes was the sense. shit. I love I, this place. I, 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 who, can, who can blame them, you know? Oh, oh, you son of a bitch. So let me ask you this, dude. Mm-hmm. What, like... What makes a good ride for you? Is there anything on a ride that like you won't do in terms of like backwards, hanging, crotch grabbing? Like what? Like, is there an aspect or a gimmick that, that you won't do? 
I used to think that, but honestly, I've been on every single type of gimmick so far. Because I think the cra- I think the place that had the craziest gimmicks um, was Cedar Point or King's Dominion. Because Cedar Point and King's Dominion both have rides where um, I think King's Dominion specifically had it where the ride starts face up, mm-hmm. but the actual beginning of the ride is you go face down and you do the whole ride. Where uh, you're not in a seat, you're in the you're in the standing position, free fall, and you do the whole ride where you're facing the ground. And you do like that shit. That's a pretty good ride. I like that. I like a lot of the rides where you've got. Um, I mean, for me, speed is king. Speed is king. So I mean, and the king of fast rides, at least when I was a kid, was the fucking Millennium Force at Cedar Point. I fucking love this ride. And everybody loved this fucking ride because the line was always ridiculously long. You were always waiting. Luckily, it's a fast ride, so it's like it's not like it's not like a normal ride where it's like it's slow, and so it's like everybody likes it, and the line's long, and the ride's slow, so it takes forever. But like the line, the ride's long, but I think for an average like circuit around the around the track, I think it takes like a minute to two minutes. Mm-hmm. So you're really not waiting that long right. uh, to get to the get to the front it's a pretty fast turnaround so that was one of the good things about it too because it would look like the line would be like two hours long but once you got in it it was probably like it was like normally like 45 minutes like an hour which for like a roller coaster is like a pretty average wait time if you're waiting for a good coaster see and also for me i mean just the roi just isn't enough that's the biggest part is probably that's the biggest thing about it is yeah the return on investment is not huge like the cost of opportunity is 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 low like an hour in line for 30 seconds potentially of actual threat or like no adrenaline doesn't make much sense to me um but on the flip side of that has there been like a worst experience on a roller coaster or ride i really don't like spinny things uh, oh. I don't like I don't like teacup rides. So you're not you're not a Gravitron guy. No, not really. Like those rides at the park where it's like the fucking Stranger Things three thing, where it's like the yeah. the circle, like just mm-hmm. like a spinning wheel. I yeah. don't like that shit. I don't like G Force like that. So now I'll... that being said, NASA, I'll be an astronaut and I'll take any fucking G Force you want. Just don't put me in a fucking wheel. I'm in a rocket ship, not in a fucking wheel. I know how this shit works. Uh, well, they do Gravitrons, so you're you're fucked. Uh, I'll do it. I'll be Neil Armstrong for a hot second to pass. I, I think I want to give you a story about my worst theme park experience, and it's not Tell even me. a roller coaster. So when I was living, is it a fried Oreo? No, no, I I destroy those. Um, even though last two years ago I went to the state fair here in South Carolina, and I got me a foot long corn dog, and it fucking sucked. That pissed me off. Yeah, bad food. Bad fair food is the worst. Like it was, a, they dipped it and they didn't let it cool enough, so it sucked. Yeah, that's. I mean, honestly, bad fair food is like probably the worst thing ever because not only is it bad food, but all fair food is expensive. So it's oh also my like God, dude. it's bad, and I'm paying an arm and a leg for it. It's yeah, like if I'm paying exactly. this much fucking money, it better be like bro, fucking top quality shit. When my girlfriend and I went to the fair this past year, dude, the I, fairs are the worst. I, I think we brought like. Two hundred dollars in cash. Spend it all, dude. And we on, spent all, yeah. all of it on like yeah. bullshit. You know, I mean, some of it was really good, and some of it was like, yeah. "This is bullshit." But my worst theme park experience ever, besides that, that first one's pretty bad, yeah. and they they just get worse. They just get worse. Um, I'll, I'll give two. I'll, I'll give. <sighs> Tell me. I'll get. I, I think can do two. Do two. I think. Okay. So here's here's the next one in my memory and my t- my timeline of my life. Okay. When I was living in Japan, in, t- in Tokyo, we did a lot of trips, like school trips, to to Japanese theme parks. Okay. Right? And there was one Japanese. wasn't really a theme park per se, but it was like a Japanese like Dino Land. Okay. Like, theme Japanese. There's like dinosaurs and there's like dinosaur Fuck, exhibits yeah. here and like. like and the they had shit ever. they had a um, a water ride. Uh, which is essentially like a dinosaur version of like Pirates of the Caribbean. Fuck yeah. Right? So you're moving at the pace that's that's not – I mean it's not that bad. No. No. It's pretty right? – I mean, yeah, all of those kind of like it's a small one after all rides are pretty slow. 
it, exactly and you're in the water you're on a track you can literally yeah. probably put your hand in the water and like probably touch the track or whatever right so but the whole time we're moving on this thing and there's like animatronic dinosaurs all around me and it's like dark and they're screaming at me and all this kind of shit so i'm like already like something about this atmosphere was so and you know you know the asian people man they just make shit scary as fuck so these mm. dinosaurs are freaking me out dude all right yeah. i'm like i'm like closing my eyes like freaking creepy scared of shit and at some point the ride stops and out of the water fucking a dinosaur head just comes up and oh I'm like, like I'm jaws like, i'm like kind of in the front front area of the road and it's like comes out of the water and i'm gripping the fucking bar so like white knuckling this shit dude i'm like yeah, probably like i'm like nine right okay and i'm surprised that i didn't like just never want to watch jurassic park again um, Damn. and then the ride, the rest of the ride was, was fine. But similarly, like, like a year, maybe a year later, we went to Di- Tokyo Disney okay. and rode Pirates of the Caribbean and no one told me there's a, there's a, there's a drop at the beginning of the ride. Is there? So the, the fucking Davy Jones does his little speech thing and it's a tiny, oh, little, it's drops, a tiny drop. little drop, tiny little drop in real life. But no one fucking told me that. So I silent crowd and I'm just screaming. Damn. Bah, fucking screaming like a motherfucker, dude. Damn. It, it, it was rough. And like, huh? I mean, any, any chance of me having a girlfriend in fourth grade was gone when, you know, when I'm fucking freaked out, you know, uh. um, that that's those are rough and the, my worst one was was recently as an adult but i'm not gonna talk about that right now i think i mentioned it before um at carowinds but what is your like what do you get what's your attack plan for a theme park do you go in do you ride every ride do you have rides rides do you want to hit beforehand you know do you how do you order like do you go by hey you know what let's just walk around and see what's not as busy do you have a plan attack first ride this one second plan this one do you go get food here food there do you what do you, like, what's the plan hmm. for you so I think the plan – I don't plan a lot ahead of time, but what I do is that I'll go there. They always have the theme park map. So I'll grab a map, and from there I plan my plan of attack. Usually I try to go in a somewhat circular motion where I start to one end, and I try – I want my goal would be to circle around the entire park and then make it back. Sometimes right. theme parks don't want you to do that, and they got fucking weird shapes throughout all their shit. Um, but my basic goal is always to try to do the semicircle where – Wherever we start, that's where we're going to start because that's the mm-hmm. closest thing. That's what I want to do. And then we just fucking – I mean usually when I'm doing it, we've got all day. So then we can get circle back around. And my end goal would be to, be to end up – the last thing we do is right back where we started. So I, I, I'm i the complete opposite. You know, I'm mm. like I'm like chaos. Okay. I go into a park I go or a fair, specifically fairs. Yeah, but even like a Carowinds or a theme park, I go. You know what? Okay, what food sign catches my attention first? Mm. And then I just that walk that direction. You know, I'll go into it thinking, you know what? What do I want today? Turkey leg, yeah, churro, mm-hmm. or like a lemonade. It depends mm-hmm. on what I'm looking for. And then I dip and just... dots. Oh, staple. My dip and staple dots guy. <gasps> what? Oh, I love dip and my, dots. My, oh my god. My staple foods at theme parks and or fairs. Mm-hmm. If I'm going fairs, there's more options at fair than a theme park. Obviously, the, theme park you get chicken tenders. Mm. That's all you can. A shitty burger. Yeah. Overpriced plastic cup with like a. With <gasps> dude, bad I love Coke. those collectors cups. Holy with, fuck, dude! With, those with those a bad cups fountain drink. Oh, that's usually I was at Carowinds a couple years back, and it was like 15 bucks for like four strips. Well, it was I went to fucking. Um... I realized that because uh, I went to a couple of years ago, I went to the, the zoo, the Columbia Zoo mm-hmm. with Caroline and they do the same shit. The yeah. fucking their food is terrible and their collector's cups, which, you know, I got to get because I love me some collectibles uh, that the cup is an extra like fucking five bucks. See, I'm like, why are you going to make me charge? You know, I just want the fucking cup. Just give me I'm, the I'm not cup. a collector cup guy. I'm a I'm a stamped penny, man. No, I'm a I'm a collector cup boy for sure. But, so my plan of attack for fairs, mm. it, 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 it depends on how hungry. I, I will not. I With eat. fairs, I'm I, honestly because I remember because I went to the South Carolina fair, and honestly, I don't trust fair rides. That's like sure. the one place where it's like I don't do fair rides. So for me, I'm 
I treat fairies the same, very similar way you do, where I'm like, I'm hungry. Where the fuck are we eating first? Yeah. I, I'll make sure that I go, I won't eat food for a whole day. Yeah. So when I get can't, there, it's done. Can't. can't it's done. Can't eat food. And then the, our local fair yeah. started adding a bunch of beer <gasps> like from like local breweries. So <sighs> now I'm getting drunk fuck. and eating everything. That's a know? dangerous combination. Yeah, it's bad. It's um, bad for my wallet. What is the last theme park you went to and when? Uh, the last time, last theme park was probably Carowinds uh, back when I was still in, yeah, probably back when I was still in college. So 20, probably 2017, I think, around there. 2016. Okay, so recently. Yeah, pretty recent. What um, I, want to, I need to go to fucking, I fucking live right next to the two biggest theme parks in the entire fucking country. Hey. And I get to fucking go. That's true. Uh, and why, why haven't you gone? Well, now they're all fucking closed. Yeah, now they're all closed. And I get SeaWorld, which I've never been to a SeaWorld, but I feel like I don't feel like... Hey, give me a second. Keep talking real quick. No, you're good. I just feel like SeaWorlds are like worse versions of zoos. I don't know. I like zoos because I love me some koalas. Koalas are lovable. I love me some koalas. Um, I love lions and I love kangaroos. Oh, my God. Kangaroos exhibits at zoos, guys, are like... Well, the fucking shit. Kangaroos are awesome. So I mean, I love like mammals like that, but I'm not a big, not a big fish guy. Like I like aquariums, but I don't. I think I, I mean Sea World isn't really about the fish, honestly, because it's more about the fucking dolphins and the killer whales. But I'm not a huge killer whale guy. Like I was never big into free willy. I like dolphins, but like I don't know if I pay like. Two hundred dollars to go fucking, you know, see some dolphins or some shit. I don't know. I just feel like Sea Worlds are like the worst versions of aquariums. Sea World, not for sea World sucks. Yeah, so it's like I've never had the desire to go to a Sea World. I so. think about I was probably junior in high school, maybe when my parents mm. wanted to go to Orlando. Yeah, maybe I was actually a sophomore. Um. They want to go to Orlando, so we went to SeaWorld, and we went to just SeaWorld. Yeah. And it fucking sucked. It yeah. sucked. It was just bad. I'm yeah. sure SeaWorld was popping in the 90s, but it was terrible. It was I feel like terrible. it's not popping anymore. I just feel like it's not. It's I feel trash. like this COVID is like, this is going to be the nail, like like it's a nail in the coffin for movie theaters. I feel like it's going to be in the nail in the coffin for SeaWorld. I don't and, think SeaWorld's and, coming just, back. I'm all about animal. I like animal shit, but like there's just that's, there's just that's what I was saying. It's like I love, well, it's like I don't know. I love animals, but it's like I don't know. SeaWorld just doesn't do it for me. Like I love mammals. Like I fucking love zoos. I love going to zoos. Yeah, but I like aquarium. Like I feel like I'd I'd rather just go to an aquarium than go to SeaWorld. I don't know. It's very strange. So SeaWorld sucks. Yeah, I'm also not big into killer whales, which is like the biggest part of SeaWorld. And it's just like, eh, those animals don't do it for me, so I don't really care. What's the uh, next one you want to go to, though, since you're right there? I want to go to Disney, because I want to go to fucking Star Wars. I want to make my own lightsaber. That's a lot of money, though. I know. It's like $120 or something. It's actually more money, because I actually want to buy a replica saber. Oh, so you, you want to build it? I don't know. I mean, I already played Star Wars Fallen Order, so I already built my own lightsaber. So now I'd rather just own somebody's that's dope as fuck. You can just order one right now. Yeah, I probably could. But the saber... That's also the experience. Like the saber effects, whatever the fuck they're called. Yeah. That's which which one do you want? I think I want... I can't remember all the ones that they have. I know that they have... They have Ahsoka's. They have Anakin's. They have Obi-Wan's. They have Luke's. They have both... Well, they have Anakin's and they have Luke's. They have Darth Vader's. I don't want Vader's. He's too cliche. I think I would either want Luke's... Which which Luke's? Oh, Jedi, Jedi Master Luke. Okay, okay. Green, green Blade. That's yeah. what I want. That's, that's return. Oh, yeah, return. I mean, that's the best Luke, so... I agree. Um, So, I would even want that one. Or maybe... I've always really liked his blade handle... So I think I would probably if you say Dooku, want I'm pissed. Dooku oh or Asajj. I think they have Asajj Ventress too. I actually like hers a little better because she's got the 
the like pincer cross guard thing that I think looks dope as well. Why fun. would you want Dooku's? I always thought his looks so. Dumb. I like I like the I like the weird grip on it. I think looks it looks like rad. A, looks like a dong. It's got like a bent shape to it. I mean, it looks like a gun almost. It looks like a it's dong. Very strange. What it looks like. I always thought it looked like a dick. It looked like a dick. Look like a dong. I always thought that uh, Obi Wan's looked really great. Obi Wan's is pretty sick. The little, the little ball on the end of it. They have um. They have um. The other one that I saw because I saw a guy. He he bought all of them. Um. Don't they have like uh? It's like the Jedi Knight um. That like guards the temple or whatever, like the yellow mm-hmm. blade. Mm-hmm. That one looks pretty sick too. I like that one. The look of that. I'm trying. Did to... they have a dark blade? I don't think so. I'm trying to find a list of them, but I can't find one. I see, Big Bad Toy Store has some. Dooku, Revan, Windu, Maul. Oh yeah, they have Kylo Ren now. At... Yeah. At... Saj... I don't like that. Hello. Dude, how long do you think? After High Republic comes out, that you start being able to buy fucking High Republic at fucking Star Wars. I, I don't know, because the first book... I was actually looking into that recently. The first book comes out in August. Seriously? That soon? Out in August, yeah. Jesus, fuck. So, it comes out on August 1st, and I'm, I'm going to have to acquire it. I um, have to buy I have to buy it. Well, I'm, I'm going to acquire it. Uh, well, we'll see if I buy it or not. We'll, I'll get it at some point. I'll probably read a preview on Amazon and see how garbage it is. Because they usually let you read like a chapter on Amazon. Yeah, I'm trying to see who... I don't know who, who's writing it. I can't remember. It's like Chris... Something. I know it has the character that I don't like, though. Because the first book, I think, is about the fucking... The most boring chick to ever fucking walk the place. Fucking Captain Marvel 2, I think, is supposed to be the main character. And it's like, ugh. I don't want to fucking read a book about her she fucking sucks the i first, even read a book from her i know she sucks the first author is charles soul who's written some comics um, oh you can buy because of ray's new lightsaber oh my god i don't think he's even read any novels though he's read a couple novels okay nothing nothing amazing skull kickers 18 now that i'm looking at this doesn't raise lightsaber at the end of Skywalker looks so fucking stupid. I agree. Her fucking handle looks so dumb. August 25th, hardcover novel by Charles Soule, published by Del Rey. August 25th, 2020, Star Wars The High Republic, Light of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. The only reason I kind of... I, the only reason I have any interest of even reading it is because of the fucking Space Vikings. That's the only thing keeping me going. That well, they're fucking I'm, fighting Space I'm Vikings. I'm going to read it because... I'm go. It's. I'm gonna give it a chance because I want it to be redeemed, mm. and I want. I want it to be good. Now, if I read the first novel, just like with this, the the current set of novels, I read the first three or four in the line since when they rebooted it, and they were all bad. So I stopped reading them. I'll yeah. give it a shot because it could. I could. I could enjoy them, even if it's super obvious on the nose what they're doing. I could potentially enjoy it. Um, mm. but I don't know, man. I've always wanted oh, Qui Gon's saber, yeah, Obi Wan saber, um, but they're just, they're just not they're not worth to me. Like, where am I gonna put it? I get Mace Windu's saber. His is pretty dope too. It's purple. He's pink. got the like pill shape almost to it. It's, it's, pay, it's, it's pay, very it's like, purple. yeah. His his handle though, because that's the part that always gets me more than anything else is the handles. He's got. He's his very. His is the very simplistic shape where it's like, it's very small, it's very rounded, and yeah, I don't know. I just really like the way his looks. I, I feel like even watching Star Wars Land videos, I I don't care. Mm. And it looks doesn't look it doesn't look bad. Like the the theming looks nice. The mm-hmm. but the actual rides don't impress me. The the main ride I thought was was really cool. The Rise of the Resistance? Yeah, but the, the, mm-hmm. the Millennium Falcon ride I don't necessarily care for. Yeah, I heard that ride was lame. I mean, I don't know. I just... There needs to be more to it to really draw me in. To pay that much money and wait that long. Yeah. Because Disney is getting so much more... I, I already told you that when we go to Disney, I'm staying at your house. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm already telling you that. Like, Because I'm not going to pay for a hotel if I'm going to fucking Disney. It's going to cost you too much money. Yeah. It's ridiculous how much money it costs. And 
I'm very, I'm still, I'm very, very surprised you didn't go when you first moved there, just like for a day. I didn't pass. have money. I get, I get that. Yeah. I mean, passes. especially with moving and everything, it was just like it wasn't in the cards, unfortunately. But. Well, now you got those. Now I have money that I like. Once they open up, I could probably spend a day there. Yeah. And could. I got my weekends free now, no. So you know, I got Saturday and Sunday to fucking get into some trouble, some mischief. Well, you, honestly, you probably, should, you probably should go during the week where it's not as busy. Probably, yeah. You know. Um, but so Disney is obviously your next, next attraction, next yeah. place you're going to. I think for me, Disney's on my list because I've been to Tokyo Disney. I've been to Disney World when I was really young, but I've been to Disney and Disney Sea in Japan. So I ha I've had a taste of it. Okay. That's my next place I really want to plan for is Disney World. Yeah. But since I don't go for rides, I go for food. But Disney's a good place where it's because it's not all about rides. It's a good mixture of theming and nostalgia. Right. Like, if Universal was it about rides, I'd go. Cause I, I've been to Universal. I've been to Universal, but I didn't ride any rides. I went to the Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah. And then I bought a Scarface poster. <laughs> That's what I did at Universal. Was go to the Hard Rock Cafe and then buy a Scarface poster. But you I want each their own, man. But I would go because I want to buy Back to the Future merch. Yeah, I mean so, that's like one num the, one of the number one reasons to go right there. Zach, as we wrap up, theme yes. parks. Uh, anything else you want to mention in terms of theme park and stuff? Favorite theme park currently that you've been to? Other ones you Cedar really want? Other ones you really want to go to in in the world? Any particular ride that you you seen that you, you want to try? I remember watching those Defunct Land videos, and I wish that those rides were still available because I would want to go to Tokyo. I think it was in D uh, Disney Tokyo with that fucking Black Cauldron ride. Right. That seems so fucking dope. Um, I, will, I will add this to the conversation because I, I haven't had any favorite rides. This is my favorite yeah. ride I've ever ridden. It's not It's not even, not even a fucking – it's not a roller coaster. No. In Tokyo Disney or Disney Sea, one of the two. Mm-hmm. They had a, um, or have a, um, Thousand Leagues Under the, what's it called? Thousand Leagues, the Jules Verne. Yeah. They have a lot, of, they have a lot, of, leagues under the they have lot of Jules Verne shit at Tokyo Disney. Yeah. And there was like a submarine ride where you go okay. underwater and you, there's a like giant squid and all this kind of shit. Like you're, you're in a submarine that's steamed like steampunk Jules Verne. It looks fucking great. You can watch it on YouTube actually. Okay. And you're next to a window and there's water, you're underwater, but there's just water in the window. You know, and there's fucking like a giant squids there and all this kind of shit. I remember being like so, and like the lights flash and like you're traveling deep in the water. Tokyo Disney. I remember being a kid on that ride, being so impressed. Damn. Being like this, look like it's it's just a whole different level of like attention to detail. And I was scared yeah. of shit. I thought I was actually under fucking water. Damn. Like I don't, I I think you actually go underwater. I think, but you don't go like. There's water in this ride somewhere. I don't know if you actually go under, but like I'm seeing fucking because you have you have to like you have to like it's like in the middle of like a lake, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a giant like pond lake. Yeah, shit. you have to like that's how you walk to get to it. Yeah. Um. So I know you're. I thought you actually go into the wall. Let me oh, fuck it. Let me see. Let me see. Ride uh, attraction POV under the sea. Turn oh. the volume off. Oh my god, that was way too loud. All right. Um, it looks like you go underwater, okay. or is this just video underwater? I don't know. I I don't. Do you go underwater? I don't know anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you actually go underwater. You go underwater, or they make it look like you go underwater. I don't know. There's a lot of there's too many bubbles for it to just like not be underwater. Maybe it's actually underwater. I think it's actually underwater. Shit. Okay. You got bro. the Kraken and all that shit. Like yeah, dude. Oh. That dope was, shit. I, I wrote that and I, I was fucking scared. I thought it was it was fun though. That's yeah, this looks fun to tell. That's my favorite ride that I've been on. But it's fun that they have like Jules Verne's rides. Like these are fucking dope. But I didn't know it was actually underwater, though. There's no... It's, I don't know. Either way, now that... Dude, now, that it's underwater. now that it's actually underwater, I'm never going to go back on it if I ever go back to Japan. 
Because <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna be like, nope, <laughs> it's gonna tear it to open up. Hold on, let me, let me under the scene. Oh, that haunted mansion though, dog. Oh my god. I won't write it. I've never written it. Why not? I wrote it when I was a kid and I got too scared. Oh. I got too scared, dude. I would love to watch. I would love to be in the haunted mansion. Oh, that looks so dumb. That's it. I want to go on it specifically because of all of Rocco's shit. All of this haunted mansion fix looks so fucking dope. Yeah. I get that. It looks so good. Um. Okay. Well, I'll try to see more information about this this Jules Verne thing. But Zach, anything else you want to mention, dude, about theme parks before we wrap up this episode? <sighs> no, I think we're pretty good. Cool. Well, do you have a topic idea for next week? Mm. Topic idea, a movie, a show, anything you want to talk about, anything particular? Huh. I'm trying to think if there's like a movie. Uh... I got I got a movie we should watch in review next week. Lay it on me. What is it? Star Trek 2009. Fuck yeah, let's do it. J.J. Abrams Star yeah. Trek. Yeah. Did you see that uh, fucking uh, Plinkett's coming back? For Picard, because Mike is so yeah 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 his spirit's been so destroyed by Star Trek Picard that he actually wants to do a Plinket review on it. I I'm not surprised because I haven't seen any of Picard and I'm not a huge Star Trek fan uh, as we know. But I'm not I, a huge Star Trek guy and I've never I'm never going to watch Picard. But like just hearing Mike and uh, Rich Evans talk about it and like how terrible it is and how unfaithful to like any sort of canon or just any sort of logic in general. is just like, Oh, that's, can't also, believe kinda, it. that's also how 2009 is too, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I understand, but like, and I, I get the, the, that, that's how I feel about the movie. Star- they got JJ Abrams, star Wars. Yeah, that's how I feel about, you know, a lot of shit that I like, you know, that's how I feel about star Wars and all this kind of shit too. So, yeah, I mean, I, I I understand. Let me add that to the list real quick. Star Star Trek two thousand nine movie review. Let's do Star it. Star Trek two thousand nine movie review. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to License to View. We'll be back next week with more podcasts. Hopefully, some more news, and then J.J. Abrams Star Trek review. Yeah. Later. <laughs>